Hello, bonjour, namaste, ni hao, and ohio everybody. What is going on? It is Gail Riot here, and today we're back again with another Dan Machi video where we're going to be doing another light novel discussion. A couple of days ago, we got the official cover page and synopsis for Dan Machi Volume 19, which is of course scheduled to release on the 15th of September. And then along with that, today, from out of nowhere, we got the announcement that yet another light novel is releasing in October, and we have some details about it. Of course, that means that a Mori Sensei has been writing a light novel for Dan Machi and publishing it for 13 months consecutively. Of course, we'll talk about the ramifications of that as well and talk about the outstanding effort that he's put into Dan Machi in the last 13 months. But before we get into the video, of course, if you guys go on to enjoy this one, please be sure to leave a like down below, subscribe to the channel for more Dan Machi content, and let me know in the comment section down below. What do you guys think about Dan Machi Volume 19? What do you guys think about the brand new volume that's announced? Of course, you guys already know by the title what it is. And then on top of that, what do you guys think about Amori Sensei just pumping out 13 novels for the last 13 months? Let me know what you guys think. Do you guys think he needs to cool it down a little bit? Do you guys uh, feel like he's doing a good job actually doing a, a, you know, a light novel every single month? We'll talk about that later on because I personally feel that it's a little bit much, I'm not gonna lie. I think it's a little bit much. There is a thing called burnout. So we'll talk about that later on in this video. First and foremost, let's talk about Danmachi Volume 19, which is of course releasing next month on the 15th of September. But before we go any further and talk about the light novel, the synopsis and the cover page, I'd like to warn you guys and put a disclaimer here saying that we might be talking about spoilers from Danmachi Volume 17 and Danmachi Volume 18. So if you guys do not want to get spoiled and haven't read those light novels or seen spoilers for those light novels, please move forward to the second half of the video. There will be a timestamp down below where you guys can easily move forward to the second half of the video where we will be talking about, of course, the October release. And along with it, I'm going to be talking about the ramifications of Omori Sensei writing 13 light novels and publishing them in 13 months. Of course, that is going to be a very interesting topic. And uh, like I said, please move forward if you want to check out that section of the video and you do not want to get spoiled in this section of the video. I'll give you guys three seconds, three two, one. All right, I've given you guys ample enough time to move forward. We're going to talk about Danmachi Volume 19 now and let's get into it without a further ado. Now, of course, Danmachi Volume 19 takes place right after the events of Danmachi Volume 18. Shock horror. But to be fair, a lot of people would assume that there would have been some time between, of course, the events of Volume 18 and Volume 19. But no, it does seem to take place quite immediately because if you take a look at the synopsis, right? And I'm reading the synopsis because I've actually written it and translated it the best to the best of my capabilities, okay? I'm a very, 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 um, I would say below average student in Japanese at this point in time. So I would say that it is going to be a little bit rough, but I've tried my very best, okay? The educational district is back. The familiar war games with the X faction has ended. Of course, I don't want to spoil people entirely, but just in case some people are still watching at this point, note you've just got spoiled that there is a war games in Danmachi Volume 18. I've not specified who though. And the ship has returned to Orario City, which was of course in a hurry to clean up after the events of the war games. The educational district is a huge mobile educational institution supported by the guild and Bell accidentally infiltrates the school district. Now, this is a little bit confusing to me. I don't know why Bell has accidentally infiltrated the school district. We'll talk about that in just a second. Let me finish off the synopsis right here. But he meets a half-elf girl who looks like a certain per person, which of course is the main person on the cover page, by the way. The, uh, the half-elf half -elf girl is the cover page girl as well, by the way. My, na my name is Nina Tool. Nice to meet you. Uh, and I it says uh, Rappi Kuhn here. I'm, I'm a bit unsure and, uh, uncertain here. I assume that means to say rabbit, basically, because uh, she's calling Belle a rabbit like everybody else does. The 19th Labyrinth story begins with a new chapter and a new adventure. And at the very bottom, it says a familiar myth, of course. And it releases around September 15th, 2023. We already know this. But basically, um, the school district is, of course, uh, coming to Orario City. And, uh, of course, we've learned a little bit about the educational district in recent uh, light novels. But, of course, the first time we actually saw it in its full form 
was in Sword Oratorio 13 because Sword Oratorio 13 takes place at the exact same time as Danmachi Volume 19. So a lot of what happens in that light novel is actually also simultaneously happening at the same time as Danmachi Volume 19. In fact, in Sword Oratorio 13, we do actually see Belle and Nina at the end of that chapter as well or at the end of that book as well. So it is going to be very interesting to see how it looks like from Bell's perspective. Now, the thing is, right, it goes on to talk about, um, first and foremost, uh, you know, the fact that it's supported by the guild, which is very interesting to me. I assume that's the, that's the way they supply adventures and maybe they take adventures back in return and so on and so forth. That trade of adventures goes in and out, basically. Um, and it is very interesting, basically. Um, but one thing I noticed as well, by the way, right, one thing I noticed as well, and... I'm going to take a look at this in just a moment because I feel like I missed something while I was uh, doing the translation. It does talk about, of course, needing a knight as well. And I don't think I translated that really well. Um, somebody can let me know in the comment section if they have a proper translation. I will pin it, of course, in the comment section because I've been trying to look for a proper translation. Somebody who's way better than me at Japanese. I've been trying to find somebody who's done a translation. I probably should have asked uh, the person who does the Danmachi Memoria Priest translations, da Jossie, to actually translate this for me. Um, but I, com I completely forgot and I kind of got all caught up in the idea of making this video, to be quite honest. Um, but I need to ask somebody to actually put out the proper translation because I feel like I missed a certain line where they talk about meeting a knight. And we'll come on to that in just a moment. But let's go step by step. I've been moving a little bit too forward ahead with the knight part. Um, so first and foremost, um, the war games has ended. Now, this is very interesting to me because I feel like there's a lot of loose ends that need tying up at the end of volume 18, right? And I hope that the start of volume 19 begins with those loose ends being tied up basically i really really hope that that is the case right because i feel like you know there is a lot of stuff that needed needs to be addressed stuff like you know are there new members for the hestia familiar maybe um what happened to the other familiar members that of that x faction if it has been disbanded and everything right and so on and so forth i'm saying if it has been disbanded because i don't want to spoil people but uh you know what's go what's going to happen on that front and uh it's going to be very interesting to see how many uh pages and chapters uh, Mori Sensei takes to accommodate for that. I'd assume it'll probably be at least a whole chapter or chapter and a half dedicated to obviously addressing that part, but we'll have to wait and see on that front, right? Now, the second point is, of course, the fact that the educational district is returning. Now, I don't remember from Sword Oratory 13 because, of course, it's been a while since I've actually taken a look at the Sword Oratory 13 spoilers, but I don't remember if there was a particular reason given to, as to why they're coming back or is it just their time to come back i think it was just their time to come back i'm pretty sure there was no specific like outstanding reason yet given at least in that light novel as to why they're coming back but i think it is just their usual time to come to orario city and of course it's the uh, this is the time that they come to orario basically the next point was that bell accidentally infiltrates the school district why is he accidentally infiltrating the school district? I don't know. I don't know why he's accidentally infiltrating the educational district because in my personal opinion, I thought the reason why he was going into the educational district and in the first place was to learn more about Isa's past potentially. I thought that was going to be the whole reason as to why he was infiltrating the educational district. But it seems like the way Amori is setting it up is he's accidentally infiltrating it. Now, no idea if he's still going to try and go look for Isa's past or if it's for another reason. But uh, yeah, it's very interesting that they've gone for the accidentally infiltrates route instead. Then he goes on to talk about how he meets a certain half-elf girl, which is, of course, the girl on the cover page, by the way. That is Nina Tull. That is Aina's sister. Um, obviously, I was expecting her to be a little bit shorter. I wasn't ex expecting her to be like a kid or like the size of Lily or somebody like that. But I wasn't expecting somebody that tall. Now, elves usually are portrayed as tall. Not necessarily in Dan Machi, but generally speaking, if you look at other forms of media, elves are usually portrayed as tall beings, of course, right? So I guess it kind of fits in that nature because Aina isn't that tall. Um, Riveria is relatively tall, you could say. Lafia is not that tall. Uh, and who else am I forgetting? Am I forgetting any other elf? I mean, you could talk about Alicia. Um, you could talk about, of course, Philvis and so on and so forth. None of them were like exceptionally tall, but Riveria was obviously one of them. And of course, it is possible that Nina would have taken more of, uh, you know, uh, Aina, the obviously Aina's mother and Aina and Nina's mother, Aina. Uh, I, 
she might have taken more of her genes, whereas Enam would have taken more of her father's genes potentially, and therefore is a little bit shorter. Who knows? I don't know, but it does look like Nina is a lot taller than expected, basically. But it's going to be interesting to see their interactions. I know a lot of people are like, oh, it's another girl in uh, Belle's harem and stuff like that. But like, guys, it's not like Belle is interested in, in Nina at all anyways. And we have to wait and see how it develops. It could just be a friendly relationship as well. It could be just two friends right um but yeah we'll see how it goes i'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt until and unless we see the rest of the story and see what happens of course right because i'm not gonna judge it like immediately saying like oh it's another oh that's another girl for bell's harem you know when it probably might not even be the case you know especially if she finds out that Ana is interested in bell i I don't know. I don't think that's going to turn out to be much, to be quite honest. But we'll see. Um, the next point is, of course, talking about the nights that I feel like I missed out on. I wasn't sure on that, so I decided to leave it outside. I've mentioned it in my notes saying that there is something about nights, but I'm not sure exactly if I'm right or wrong. And basically what this means is, and the reason why I feel like they're actually talking about the night is because, of course, the educational district actually hosts the night of nights. And that is, of course, the outside level 7 character that we've been waiting to see, of course. Remember, when the series started, right, when the series started, Omori Sensei said there were two level 7s, Otaro, who was in Orario, and the other level 7 was outside Orario. He is the Knight of Knights, and that seems, that seems to be our level 7 character, and we will probably see Belle and him interact as well. So yet another character to add to the list of characters that Belle will probably end up forming a relationship with, in terms of be it as a friend, acquaintance, whatever it may be, maybe even as a potential mentor for a little bit, possibly, possibly, right? And uh, that could lead to very interesting things for the maybe the second half of the arc or something like that because we don't know how long this arc is going to be actually as well by the way we still don't know how long this arc is going to be um this could be a two volume arc it could be a three volume arc who knows right but right now we're going to assume it is a i'm going to assume it's a three volume arc just like the other ones you know um if you look at xenos it was volumes 9 to 11 um the of course the whole thing with uh, bell and ryu and the juggernaut and the Deep Floors, it was volumes 12 to 14, the Expedition arc, you could say, and the Deep Floors arc. And then, of course, the most recent arc, the War Games arc, was between uh, volume 16 to volume 18. So, a lot of stuff to be covered um, if it is going to be a three-volume arc. And it's going to be very interesting to see how Amori Sensei develops this. But yeah, there you guys go. And the cover page is very interesting as well. Of course, like I said, you can see the educational district in the background, like the ship as a whole. Um, Nina is there. Of course, uh, the 19 number is actually the head of a character. I think it's one of the one of Nina's friends or something. One of the other members of the educational district. It's a very nice cover, I must admit. Very unique cover in a way because it feels like it's a bit weird not seeing Belle um, in the cover itself, of course, of a uh, main series light novel. Um, of course, Volume 18 didn't have Bell on the main cover as well. It was only Hestia. So maybe it's a it's a direct a new direction for uh, Omori Sensei to take when it comes to uh, you know or the illustrator I should say in this situation for them to take Bell off the cover pages of Danmachi's main series light novels. It's very interesting in that regard. But that is of course Danmachi Volume 19. I'm very excited to read it next month. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing everybody's response to it. I, a lot of people were very indecisive about of course how they felt about Danmachi volume 18 some people loved it some people hated it a lot of people may have been in the middle but let's see what they have in store for us for Danmachi volume 19 and the direction they take us because in October we're going to be getting a brand new light novel and the light novel is a new familiar chronicles it is episode Ryu 2 yes we're getting a sequel to episode Ryu, Danmachi Familiar Chronicle, episode Ryu 2 is scheduled to be released around 15th October 2023. This is a fairy tale that will never be spelled out, Apocrypha of Gale, Story of Leon. The Danmachi series has been published for 13 consecutive months, look forward to the release. We'll talk about this in a moment. I am surprised that we're getting episode Ryu 2, to be quite honest. It is a bit surprising to see uh, episode Ryu 2 come out. And it, it, the fact that it says this is a fairy tale that will never be spelled out. Apocrypha of Gale, story of uh, Leon. I have no idea what that means. I have absolutely no idea what this means. And in all honesty, it, it is a bit interesting to see that we're getting episode Ryu 2. Uh, would I have wanted another Familiar Chronicles with another Familiar? 
probably to be quite honest because i feel like at the real we've kind of i'm not gonna lie we've we've gathered everything that we need to know about her to be quite honest let's be real right we've seen a stray record we've seen her past with the astray familia and the uh, the dark moments that she had to go through after the events of uh, the first time she faced the juggernaut of course and lost the astray familia then of course her the, the events of volumes 12 to 14 and just generally our experiences with ryu even the things that she does in the most recent light novels from volume 16 to 18 i feel like we know ryu well enough so it's going to be interesting to see where Amori Sensei takes this episode and uh, this arc for Ryu. Is it going to be taking place while Belle is in the educational district maybe? Um, you know, we see her going through her own development and her own story arc maybe. It's going to be very interesting to see because I have no idea where you can go from here with Ryu's story to be quite honest. It is very very interesting to see that we're getting another Ryu story. Uh, let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section because yeah, I'm just a little bit confused. I mean, I'm all for Ryu uh, stories, don't get me wrong. I love Ryu as a character and she's like my in my top three waifus for Don Machi, right? But I feel like that, that episode, from, that Familiar Chronicles episode could have been given to potentially somebody else who needed it. You know, another familiar that needed it. Maybe they could have gone back in the past and done a, maybe a Zeus and Hera one. I know Mori Sensei has said for a very long time that he doesn't want to do it or he's not going to do it until after, you know, the main series ends. But like something along those lines or maybe something else entirely. Maybe another familiar that is either in Orario or outside of Orario as well right now. Maybe you could uh, address the likes of, I don't know, I'm trying to think of a familiar that's interesting or a character that's interesting that we could have an epi uh, a familiar chronicles on. But maybe somebody like, for example, I want to say, let's chuck in... I was going to say Hephaestus, but I don't know how much about Hephaestus would we really look into, to be quite honest. But I don't know. I, it's kind of hard to think about, actually. I mean, there, there's not many other options thinking about it. But, like, I feel like you could easily come up with somebody and you can get, make that story happen, right? I don't know. There's there's ways for Amori Sensei to have gone about this. But I feel like episode Ryu 2, I don't know what they can do with this. I don't know what they can do. Let me know what you guys think. Maybe maybe I'm being a bit too harsh on the fact that we, we're getting another Ryu episode. Um, and maybe it's my desire to want somebody else or, or to des my desire is to want another Familiar Chronicles for another Familiar or character. But you guys can let me know in the comment section down below. I'm very curious to see what you guys have to say in the comment section down below. But let's talk about Amori Sensei really quickly. Let's talk about him really quickly because... My man has been writing 13 light novels and publishing them for the last 13 months, right? 13 volumes will be published in a row for 13 months. Um, I don't know how he's doing this, in all honesty. It's insane. You know, going from two years of not writing anything for the main series or Sword Oratorio or anything to pumping out 13 volumes. Now, admittingly, yes, I, I will agree that let's say five of them, five or six of those light novels are pretty much rinse and repeats, basically, because, of course, Astraea Record and Argonaut were already written for Dan Mimo. All that needed to be done was translated into a uh, light novel format, from game adaptation to light novel format, which isn't easy, by the way, because you still have to write everything. You have to be more descriptive and all that jazz. So it's still technically not easy. It's just like making a brand new light novel anyways. But, of course, there is that factor that the material was already there for Amori Sensei to just lift off and put into the light novels and make some adjustments and of course be more descriptive. Of course, to add to that, Australia Record did have changes, of course. we I don't know if Argonaut had any changes. I haven't looked too much into detail regarding Argonaut and the comparison with the game adaptation. But I know Australia Record definitely had changes from the light novel um, to the game adaptation or the game adaptation to the light novel, I should say. So there is that factor as well. And then, of course, outside of that, he's been doing some short stories as well and stuff like that, which are obviously collections, by the way. The short stories are already pre-existing collections that have been just bounded together into one book, basically. So there is that factor that some of the light novels he didn't really need to do too much work on. But nonetheless, it's still a lot of effort for, uh, you know, doing 13 light novels consecutively and i guess this is the reason why we're also not seeing him work on don mimo anymore right he's he can't do all of this and work on don mimo at the same time and to be quite honest i also believe that he's not also working on don machi battle chronicle at this point in time i assume he's probably taking a bit of a back step when it comes to battle chronicle and letting the development team work on it primarily and then maybe he'll come in for like 
supporting role, basically supervising some of the uh, stories, approving of the uh, certain stories, making some slight adjustments. Hopefully he's learned from his mistakes in Dan Mimo because in Dan Mimo, he was supposed to do that actually where he was supposed to only take a supervising role, but then he ended up taking a much more active role where he would actively change the story when the drafts would be given to him. They need to be able to control him a little bit more and allow him to take that breather where he's only supervising and he's only approving of the work. He goes through it, makes some slight adjustments, but doesn't actively like work on the draft, you know, and change it entirely or something. So we'll have to wait and see on that front, of course, how much of a role he plays in Battle Chronicle, of course, right? I hope he does write the anniversary stories at least, right? If he doesn't do anything for the um, normal events, at least for the anniversary stories, I would like to see him come back though for Battle Chronicle. But it makes sense with all this work that he's doing with the light novels and everything, right? It makes sense why he's not doing Don Mimo and, of course, the Battle Chronicle stuff potentially. We still don't know about that entirely, but we know he's taking a, uh, he's uh, leaving Don Mimo. Hence why Don Mimo is not having any original stories after the 6th anniversary, right? But it's just so much work. He's going to get burnt out. I mean, right now, even with him doing 13 light novels and doing it in a row, basically that's that, that's the definition of nearly reaching a burnout and i'm hoping that he the, after this one after familiar chronicles episode Ryu 2 we are done we are done for a while i i'd like him to take a break for like six seven months go and do some battle chronicle stories if you want to on the side just to give yourself a little bit of a breather you know make some funny stories or something because my man has been writing so much over the last 13 months man so i'm hoping that he takes a break let me know what you guys think on this front as well because i feel like it's a lot man it's a lot to put into and it, I, it's crazy how much he's done so yeah i don't know i don't know i feel like uh omori sensei needs to take a little bit of a breather uh, after the release of episode ryu 2 uh and i'm very curious to see what you guys have to say about all these announcements and all this stuff let me know in the comment section down below what do you guys think thank you guys so much for watching this video please be sure to leave a like down below subscribe to the channel and i will see you guys in the next one until then take it easy everybody Bye bye